Hi, everyone. Hi, audience. Hi, yeah. Abbas. All right, yeah. so let me introduce you to the audience. Uh, hey, guys, today we have with us Abbas. Uh, Abbas is the co-founder of Studio Sira and recently raised a seed round from Lumikai, which is a gaming VC. And Abbas's today's talk is going to be about raising funds for your own indie game. Uh, before I hand it over to Abhas, there's just two points that I would want to mention. Uh, number one, I will be pasting the link for the feedback in uh, the handouts tab and also in the discussion tab. Please do take out time towards the end of the session to provide a feedback. And also, please keep posting your questions in the Q&A tab. Uh, as soon as Abhas is done with his talk, he will start picking up your question and start answering those. That's it from my side. Over to you, Abhas. Good luck. Awesome. Thanks, Mayank. And hello, everyone. Uh, very glad to be here today. And, and thank you so much for showing up. Um, just a, a quick kind of introduction. Um, as my mentioned, I'm, I'm the co-founder of Studio Sera. We make core Indian content games. Our, our entire kind of thesis is that, you know, any game with so-called Indian culture or Indian content till now has been you know, very like hyper casual or RMG. And, you know, we wanted to change that and actually build core games, you know, for an Indian audience. And, and that's what we set out to do. Uh, just to, you know, before I jump into fundraising specifically, just wanted to give a quick background on, on how I came here and, you know, how we set this up in the first place. Uh, so I'm, I'm originally an economics graduate from, from Berkeley. I came back to India and did my MBA, went a pretty, Typical route, uh, you know, did a consulting job for a while and was always a very passionate, you know, fan of gaming. Uh, my brother and I used to game from know, when we were like five years old on an Atari console, started playing a ton of like PC games when this first started coming out, you know, big fan of strategy games, of, of fantasy games, the whole civilization series and Age of Empires and Age of Mythology. So really grew up on on kind of the old school uh, PC gaming cult. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I was at Bain for such a long time, I, I was really trying to look for that kind of outlet to, to do something and then create an impact on the world in, in the way, you know, we would like to. Um, so, you know, five years into Bain, uh, quit my job, uh, came back, you know, the pandemic obviously had a role to play because you know, things had gone remote and uh, came back home, you know, met my brother. We rekindled our kind of memories of how gaming fueled uh, such an amazing, you know, sense of passion in us. And, uh, you know, that, then the insight came that day, uh, why isn't anyone making good Indian content games which uh, core gamers would like to play? Uh, so that's that's how it started in the first place. We, you know, started from from scratch, from nothing. We, we literally built, you know, paper prototypes, uh, you know, then went to Python, uh, then actually built a Unity prototype. And then in March this year, uh, we actually started looking for funding uh, after several kind of talks with multiple VCs, we uh, landed up speaking to Lumikai. Uh, Lumikai, as you know, is a, is a gaming focused venture capital firm. And that's where we raised our seed round. Uh, so that's, that's in short our journey. Our first game is called uh, Kurukshetra Ascension. It's a game based on Indian mythology and we're super excited to get it out. In terms of this talk, I'd like to keep it short, uh, you know, maybe give you 10 minutes on what I feel are the fundamentals which you should keep in mind while you're raising funds and then try to keep it open for questions. Just give me one second. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so the game's name is Kurukshetra Ascension. Just, just let me let me stick to the to the topic, and then happy to answer any questions. So, so raising funds for your game, right? So, I think I think a couple of uh, upfront questions that people have is what do people really look for? What do investors really look for when you are going out there to to get your game funded? So I think the the answer actually is in framing the question differently, right? You you can't go to get your game funded. 
you can go to get your studio funded you can go to get your business funded uh, so try to think about a long term strategy you know what is the market you are going after and what will be the series of games that you build to kind of chase that market down the second thing is you know who are you so what is your motivation to actually come here and build games and do you actually bring those skills which are necessary to execute on that right so if you've built games before you would know that there are multiple different skill sets needed right so there is you know tech side there is the design side uh, there is obviously the art side uh, and then there is marketing or business right so you don't have to have all the skills you need when you go in but you should have a plan to acquire that you should know that these are our strengths and you know this is what these are the gaps that we will fill if we get funding so in our case for example my brother pratik is very strong technically you know he was covering the entire technical side of the gaming you know uh, uh in the engineering side the server side the unity side uh very well uh, i had a lot of kind of insight from the business world and obviously both of us were passionate gamers what really helped in our case was also that we came with a prototype so you know we built a significant amount on our own we'd actually started testing with people before we even went for raising funds so that gave people confidence in our ability to build that game the third thing you know which we were kind of uh, really probed on was why do you want to do this like why will you stick it out uh, will you be able to stick it out you you know that it's a pretty tough industry uh, you know games are not guaranteed to be hits and therefore what is the motivation that will keep you going beyond your first game so knowing that reason knowing your passion knowing that you want to build these kind of games for the long for a long kind of for the long run uh, that really also inspires confidence those are some of the basic questions just to kind of break down also some specifics that you might have to add so for example that you know financing your game now it you know a lot of people are like how including me i was like how can i estimate you know finances of my entire game development over the next few years when you know i i i hardly have scratched the surface of game development right so there's a lot of ways to do that firstly you know try to keep it at at a high level you know no one's looking for extremely detailed you know person by person estimates of exactly what you're going to do uh it has to be something which makes the investor feel that you have a sense of what are the buckets involved what are the broad expense buckets involved what will be the biggest ones that you will incur and that you have some estimate of the fact that you know if you give me funding this is what it will go towards uh you know these are my primary biggest expenses these are the five people that i really need to hire uh this is like my biggest expense because my art will be expensive or i'm finding a very strong technical solution and that's where i have to invest so knowing or giving the investor the confidence that you have thought about the business angle uh about how to you know use those funds when you get them the second thing of course is your target market right like what or who are you targeting uh is it india is it international what age group you know what is the need that you are fulfilling uh you know is it for us for example we thought that uh, the pandemic brought uh, millions of casual players to gaming and then our insight was that people will gradually graduate to core games you know they'll want games with more depth or more progression and that people who are already playing let's say mid core games may want indian content uh so that was that was kind of our belief in terms of the audience we could target you know people who are maturing from casual games and people who are playing western mid core games and may want indian content so similarly try to define your target audience and and it's okay to say that hey these are three potential target audiences that that we may look at uh but you know this is our this is our hypothesis we need to test it but we have a working hypothesis ki this is the market we are going after and it could be very specific it could be slightly broader but you should have done that research 
right? So this was a lot about the content of your pitch, uh, about you know what uh, what you should be bringing in terms of the the pitch deck itself. Uh, the second aspect, you know, I wanted to cover broadly is is the mindset or the challenges or you know how the experience really is. You know, it's it, it's one thing to to say you should do 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 to this this this, but it's a it's a second thing to actually go through it. And uh, you know, some of the biggest the biggest challenge, honestly, is is your own mental fortitude, your own mental strength. Uh, you know, when you're coming up with a game idea, it is after all. Uh, it's a creative concept you know it's not uh, it's not key up you know you're not selling uh, food ordering services you know it's not it's not a it can never be a fully verified need you know it, there is there is at some point a, a leap of faith which you are taking and you are trying to convince other people to take that leap of faith with you um, so because of the nature of of this business itself you know every time someone says no or someone doesn't show belief in your idea you yourself will you know tend to start questioning what you are you know you're you're, you're wrestling with those ideas yourself and and you may feel like a spurt of demotivation at the entire project right um so that is something you really have to deal with so uh, my advice for that would be that you don't uh, it's not as if you ignore people's feedback you know, a VC may have something very good to say. They they may come back and say that, hey, you know, we think you're a good team, but you know, you haven't really figured out how to monetize. You know, you haven't really figured out uh, your target audience well. And and it's okay to take that feedback and and incorporate it, but not to demotivate yourself fully to the point that you you know you give up, right? And and that's that's really really important to keep in mind. Uh, take that feedback, but but keep moving on because. Another VC will have a different perspective, and you know, don't take it as the be all end all. Um, I guess the other thing, you know, what I think is improving, but uh, was a real struggle, and probably much more for gaming studios before us, uh, was that a lot of more broad based VCs don't have as much of an understanding of of the games you're building or the project, you know, the product you're bringing to the market. So. Um, in our case, you know, before Lumic, a lot of time would be spent just in explaining things like, you know, what does what does a core game mean? Uh, you know, what is this audience that we're talking about? And, uh, you know, how can we really expect people to pay for, you know, a hero in the game, for example? You know, like just fundamentally explaining something like in-app purchases in, a, in an instant so that you can actually get to the meat was, was often difficult. But I think that is improving. Uh, even even VCs, which are very broad based, are getting a more niche understanding of of the gaming dynamics. Um, yeah, and uh, I would I would say you know as as a piece of advice, uh, you know it, it it can always feel that hey uh, I should go out to the market and you know get a lot of feedback and get a lot of metrics before getting funded. Uh, that can be a good and a bad thing if you you know have a really good product already going then that gives you a lot of leverage it, it obviously gives you uh, a very good set of talking points and data to talk with but don't feel that you can't go before that you know if you have a good vision if you have a good team if you have a prototype you can still go before launching and and you can still raise you know some funds so that you have a better chance when you're launching and and you can put in the funds needed to build a game that you want it's obviously harder than you know when you have metrics, but it's also uh, it's also very helpful and, and and is possible. So that was you know that was kind of my fifteen minutes on uh, you know just a monologue on uh, what our experience at Studio Sira has been. Uh, I would be very happy to take questions in terms of uh, you know anything which is on top of mind for you. Uh, you know we're obviously. My ink's back as well. We're obviously, you know, not um, we <laughs> we don't know the answer to everything, but I'll I'll try my best based on the biggest questions that you guys have. Yeah, I really like the talk. Uh, thanks, Abbas. I think there are quite a few questions, and uh, you might want to skip a few because we don't really have time for answering all these questions. So I will actually hand it over to you. You know, you decide which one you want to pick first. 
Got it. Okay. Uh, so I go to the Q and A, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So I think there is a question which asked by Behru Lal. Uh, if I'm an indie game developer, is it good to start my company or I need to know some business knowledge before doing it? Uh, I think that's, that's, that's a good question. I, I think it depends on uh, the skills you already have. So if you are coming from a, a very technical or art background, and you know that is where your strength lies and that is where you specialize, uh, and then it's not necessary that you are also the person that covers the business or marketing knowledge or you know all aspects of the game development. Uh, but it is recommended that you find a partner or a co-founder or you know someone senior in your team who who does fulfill that. You know either a senior product manager, you know, or a co-founder who really understands the business or the or the metric side of it. Uh, but it's not necessary that that you as an individual. Uh, are covering all aspects of, of game development. Uh, I think I saw a very good talk uh, in on this uh, channel called Deconstructor of Fun. It's a, it's a very good uh, kind of uh, it's it's a good uh, podcast on on game dev. If, if you guys are interested, do check it out. And uh, the the four divisions they talk about, you know, broadly are uh, you know tech, art, you know, game design, and, and business. Right. So you know each of those those four are uh, you know, really, really different. Uh, they obviously have huge interplay, uh, but you should have strengths in each of those, either individually or you know, as your team comes together. Uh, but don't feel like you have to cover everything yourself uh, when when you go forward. Okay. Um, let's see another question, which is: Do you see a market for quality games in India? And how long is your game taking to develop? So uh, we do see a market for quality games in India. Uh, you know, we we really think that it's already there. You know, like if you look at the top grossing games uh, within India right now, uh, they're they're all very high quality Western games. In fact, you know, uh, a bunch of them were, other than a few, I guess, real money gaming firms which have made uh, you know. Poker or Team Patti or Ludo, uh, almost everything else is is quite high quality and uh, has been pretty much developed by you know really good studios with with a really high bar on content, on progression, on on the way they attract their audiences. Uh, so we really feel you know that India will migrate. You know they're already on quality games and now they'll want quality games with Indian content. Uh, our game, you know. Every game it has a very different development cycle. Uh, a lot of people in the audience may know better than you know better than me about this. But hyper casual games can be built in weeks. Uh, casual games can take up to months. Our game has been in production for about you know eight to twelve months now, and uh, we're very close to an open beta in Jan, uh, where the public will be able to download it. Uh, but for mid core games, you know it can take one to two years easy. To fully launch uh, a game which has a good amount of depth and content. Okay. Okay. Just looking at. Uh, okay, I see another uh, question by Taher Kalpita Wala. What are generally the terms put forward by a VC if they decide to invest in a game? Like, what exactly do they expect in return? Um, okay, very, very diverse expectations can occur. I mean, fundamentally, they expect they expect returns on their money, right? So they, they expect a, a good uh, a good kind of healthy. Uh, they expect you to you know do well with your games. Raise good revenue, raise further rounds, get a high valuation, and, and exit. Uh, they obviously also expect to understand the the kind of market through you and and, and make you know uh, bet on bet on ideas that they think will kind of define the culture going forward. Uh, if you're talking about specific terms, uh, that can really really vary based on the kind of VC you are interacting with. 
uh, you know they could they could ask for a board seat uh, you know they could ask for liquidation preferences uh, you know they, they could ask for uh, certain rights based on you know if you stop uh, your journey in your studio then you know then what happens to the funds that they've given you so that can get pretty nuanced uh, but broadly hey you know they're investing you know they they need to make their money and uh, that's that's kind of, that's pretty much the expectation from you okay i see a lot of comments coming below yeah there are a lot of questions that are you know still coming in and uh, you know <laughs> the last question i would just want to say that that was quite an interesting question and an equally interesting response to that one i like <laughs> it Thanks, Mike. Uh, okay, I'm 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 getting a bit lost. I'm just going to pick it up randomly. Please allow me to do that. Um, okay, so which podcast that was the constructor of fun? It's an angle of you know, it's a business angle on games. Um, how to handle the financial situation in the initial stages of game development for a studio? Paying salaries, getting resources—that's a very tricky question. Uh, you know, we learned on the go. Uh, it's 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 very very difficult initially. Again, as I said, to to make and to make a completely precise estimate of what you need. Uh, the you, you should be handling your financial situation based on your capacity, right? So when uh, when at Studio Sera we we started out, we uh, were just a two member team. You know, we were we. Were, Paying out of our own savings, and uh, the kind of financial uh, resources and people that we were targeting was completely different from what we started targeting once we raised funding. Uh, so you know you could you could look at you know the the top requirements that you have in terms of you know I really need one good artist, and then you know you bootstrap your way to it. You um, if you're if you're really cash strapped, you start with picking up a lot of skills yourself firstly and then you know only paying for skills which you feel are completely outside of of your skill set you know so if you feel art is something you cannot enter uh, you know that then that you definitely need to get a good person for that uh, you know your uh, for example hardware is is something you you cannot not invest in you know it's it's something that will Clearly, speed up your development process, and and you have to invest in that. So find your essentials, uh, and and pay for those, you know, and and invest in those well. You know that that one person who joins your studio or joins your vision early on, you know, if they are committed, if they are good, they can provide a huge boost uh, to your to your entire game development journey. Uh, but yeah, you know, later on, once you do have funds, you you you'll have a completely different lens as to how to hire and and what to pay for. uh obviously there are there are ways to reduce your financial you know improve your financial situation uh unity or unreal has amazing assets which you can purchase at really low costs to actually speed up your process of developing a prototype uh you know there are amazing freelancers on you know websites like fiverr and upwork who and there are imagine you are a you are an indie developer you know they are and they are indie freelancers you know they are indie artists they are indie developers who are just starting out as well and and if you can focus and spend time and and look for those people who haven't yet made a name uh, but are talented and are therefore cheap uh, you can actually get some pretty good services at low costs at an early stage uh, you know so we got a lot of our prototype art going through fiverr contracts you know through up and coming freelancers who were who were looking to create a name for themselves right so uh, if if you, if you look around and you spend time you know you can get a lot done with with low resources as well um okay <laughs> uh i'm not giving thinking on specific games but yeah i i thought rajji was a was a really really bold and nice good effort at bringing indian content to the world and that that's kind of what what we are also aiming to do you know we think that indian stories deserve to be told you know we have an amazing local culture to actually showcase and you know we haven't yet <clears throat> done a great job of it uh, and there's huge potential to actually do it much more Uh, yeah, there, why is there it? Not yeah. 
I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I, I was just saying that there are not not too many mythological games out there, and I think they deserve to be out there. And there, there's a huge yeah. fan following for this thing. Absolutely, and I mean, I, just imagine how Greek mythology has been introduced to the whole world. Everyone, you know, recognizes those characters, those themes. In fact, you know, there are probably young Indians who who recognize those more than you know our own mythology, <laughs> which uh, <laughs> needs to be corrected. um why is india not making uh, ps4 pc you know xbox like basically console high end console and pc games uh again i'm sure a lot of you know this but, but these are really really high budget triple a games right? and they they can go to hundreds of millions in terms of you know the budget they require and uh, they require an amazing coordination of of production in terms of you know the resources you bring in uh so that kind of those kind of studios have not yet kind of emerged in in india right like that that is a that is something which will happen we believe in the future uh but you basically investors will not bet hundreds of millions in an up and coming studio and and the whole journey of of the people of the of the studios that are making these games you know those are long journeys they have come to this stage after having spent uh years if not you know decades uh, starting from small text based games to coming up all the way to making triple a games like these with 100 member teams right so as india starts to get its own talent uh, its own studios which understand how to bring everything together you know we we will move towards you know console gaming and and then the other side of course is the market itself so um making you know given how free to play has really emerged as a very dominant theme in in making games it's uh, it's really attractive for new studios to move towards that now uh, you know there are there are lots of indie studios which can make console games but uh, competing at a global level with with console games is is much harder and needs a much bigger budget um, making a mobile game which is competitive globally can still be done on a low budget which is why i think you know india is producing more of those right now uh okay i think i'm very close to the end of the other quoted questions which i should be looking at mm okay the final situation i answered comments on gaming media that's really interesting i i haven't really thought about that but um i do think i i'm trying i'm trying to understand how to uh i'm actually trying to understand how indians consume you know their own set of core games like for us for me when i look for a game i often go to uh review websites you know i i look at game reviews and i i try to figure out like critically acclaimed games and i often buy those and i feel that's that's a huge that's a huge market right like and uh like an imdb for games similarly an ign for india uh so i i do think that reviews matter more and more as people uh move towards core games so i think that's that's going to be huge and if, and if anyone's actually looking to build media gaming focused media in india i think i think that's a great opportunity to to go after so we are left with the last minute and let's pick our last question and i think it's going to be a game the answer is going to be an interesting one so kickstarter versus vc yeah your opinion <laughs> kickstarter versus vc i i would say it's uh, it's a very it's a very very different approach i honestly don't have the kickstarter experience but i, I know some friends who've done it uh kickstarter is all about marketing chops you know you you really need to you need to know how to sell something which has not been built to a whole bunch of consumers and get them excited about it uh, so it's it's a very very different kind of approach uh, if you have you know good art good videos uh, anything which you think can get a lot of people excited and summarize your vision the kickstarter is great it's it's honestly like you're not giving away much and you're pretty much getting a great amount of funding uh, for giving away just like in game assets or it, it, it's basically free uh, other than the fact that you have to give your uh backers something in game uh so if you can do that you should 
uh, it's obviously a very competitive uh, forum and, and and a very low percentage of uh, kind of games or any idea you know really goes big. Uh, but if you if you want to do it, you should really really build a, a good marketing portfolio to actually get that done. All right, so you know this is directly coming from me that you actually have had an amazing journey and thanks for sharing your experiences and helping out our audience with the gyan that you actually literally acquired hands on. So <laughs> this, this was amazing and uh, thanks to the audience as well, guys. Thanks for being a part of uh, this talk. And uh, before we leave the stage, I would like to take a moment to thank all our sponsors. Our presenting sponsors are Unreal Engine, Gold sponsors MPL, AWS, Glance and Jungly. Legacy Silver sponsors are Gameshan, Laksha Digital and Yes No. Bronze sponsors, Kowali and Gameon. Hypercasual track sponsors is Sunday. And IP Connect sponsors, Succeed Inno uh, Innovation Fund. Uh, guys, don't please don't forget to fill the feedback form. That really, really helps us in improving ourselves and, you know, as, as a whole experience that we provide to you. Uh, thanks once again, Avas and audience. And uh, uh, audience, please, please, uh, stick to this track. Uh, we have an am amazing uh, talk right next to this uh, this particular talk at 7 p.m. It's already started, which is about uh, mathematics for game developers and uh, will be by Avid Vivedi. Thanks, everybody. Thanks awesome. for joining us today. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.